Hey everybody, today we're going to look at The Mitchells vs. The Machines. This is the latest movie produced by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who previously brought us the Lego movie and Into the Spider-Verse, written and directed by Michael Rianda and Jeff Lowe, and starring the voices of Abby Jacobson, Maya Rudolph, and Danny McBride. Jacobson plays Katie, a young weirdo and aspiring filmmaker, and she and her parents, played by Rudolph and McBride, don't really get each other. In fact, most people don't get Katie. But she's about to go to film school in California, where her people are, and she's very excited about that. But before she can go off to film school, in a last-ditch effort at familial bonding, her parents have decided to take her on a cross-country road trip instead of just flying her out to L.A. Meanwhile, a popular smartphone company has just released its lineup of robotic personal assistants, and they have assured everyone that the robots will not turn evil. So they turn evil, and somehow it is up to the Mitchells to save humanity. I wasn't really sure what to expect from this, I hadn't heard a whole lot about the movie, but when I realized Lord and Miller were behind it, I figured I might as well give it a watch, and I ended up enjoying the hell out of it. I've watched it twice already. I really like this character Katie and the very silly home movie she makes starring her dog Munchie. And I love how in the credits, Abby Jacobson is credited both as Katie and as Dog Cop. As it should be, because Dog Cop is actually a very important character in the movie. Rudolph and McBride were both great as the parents. Uh, this certainly is not what I would consider a typical Danny McBride role, but I do think he made it work. They did a great job of conveying the frustration between Katie and the dad and their inability to really connect, which is not an uncommon experience for teenagers and parents. I also want to mention Olivia Coleman, who plays the villain, and I don't know if I want to say too much more about the character because it's kind of a spoiler, but she was great. And given that the main characters of this movie are a bit weird, it does make sense that the animation would follow suit. Most of it looks like any modern computer animated movie, but there are several shots that are kind of overlaid with these crudely hand-drawn images, and it's a blending of two very different styles that really shouldn't work, but somehow it does. This is largely a movie about family and the parents and kids eventually learning how to understand each other, but it's also very much about technology and how it has completely taken over many aspects of our lives, as evidenced by the fact that almost every appliance out there nowadays has Wi-Fi built into it. Why does a friggin' refrigerator need Wi-Fi? I don't know. But of course there is also some good stuff technology has done for us, like, well, this. And I thought the movie did a pretty good job of highlighting the good while at the same time not sugarcoating the bad. When it needs to call out the bad aspects of technology, it does. There's a really good line in the movie from the head of this smartphone company. It's almost like stealing people's data and giving it to a hyper-intelligent AI as part of an unregulated tech monopoly was a bad thing. Oh, you think? This is a very funny movie. I was laughing my ass off throughout. A lot of really good lines, a lot of really good sight gags. Uh, pretty much anything involving that dog was just hilarious, especially when the robots kept getting confused by the dog because they couldn't identify what it was. Dog. There's also a thing where the mom kind of feels threatened by this family that lives next door to the Mitchells because she sees them as the perfect family and her own family is just friggin' weird. She's going through all their Instagram pics and noticing, oh my god, these all look so perfect. Why can't we take a decent family photo? Our family photos all look like crap. And the dad's like, that one looks okay. That's not us, that came with the frame! And this is made even more hilarious by the fact that the perfect family next door are voiced by John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. While the Mitchells are trying to save the world, they encounter a couple of glitchy robots played by Beck Bennett and Fred Armisen, who were very funny. There's a very funny scene where the robots are treating a human being the same way humans treat their smartphones. <laughs> The mom has a really funny line after Katie points out that she's handling the apocalypse pretty well, and she says, I'm a first grade teacher. This is like a normal day for me. And that's why we should pay them more. Even the obligatory nut shot was funny. I don't know how they pulled that off, but they did. Now, as strong as this movie is, if it does have a weak spot, I think it would have to be Katie's little brother, Aaron, who is actually voiced by one of the creators of the film, Mike Rianda. And I think that was a mistake. It's not that he's necessarily a bad performer, but 
Aaron looks like he's supposed to be maybe about 12, and he does not sound like a 12-year-old boy at all. His voice sounds like mine, just slightly higher pitched. Like, he kind of sounds like this. I mean, if you heard a voice like this, would you think this was a 12-year-old? No, of course not. And supposedly, the main reason Aaron and Katie are able to get along so well is that they're both kind of weird. But, well, Katie's weird thing is filmmaking. Aaron's weird thing is dinosaurs. Every kid likes dinosaurs. That's not weird. Surely there must have been something else you could have thought of that would actually make this kid a bit weird. Dinosaurs? That's... that's nothing. But overall, great movie, very funny, I had a great time watching it, and it's on Netflix, and I highly recommend checking it out. And that's all I have to say about The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Till next time, take care.